Hello, this is Daniel from soundheadquarters.com. In today's video, we are transforming this home studio and taking it from this to this. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how we build and install these acoustic panels for the walls, acoustic mix position clouds, and also some custom sized panels to fit inside this client's windowsill. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step step the whole process. Here's some more glamour shots to get you hyped up. Let's get right into it. So I started off with 5 8 inch plywood from Home Depot and I had them rip it in half to make it a little bit more manageable for me to cut down to size on my table saw. So these acoustic panels and clouds and window panels, they're all going to be four inches wide. So I am ripping these sheets down into four inch strips. And once I do this on the table saw, then I can cut them down to final size and nail the panel frames together. You can see I put a 45 degree bevel on my table saw there. This is so I can build the top and bottom braces for the panels, as well as the wall mounts. These are going to end up being French cleats. Uh, and they're also going to be built into the rear side of the panel, which you'll see in a minute. There you can see that 45 degree bevel on there. So now that I have all my pieces ripped uh, to size, now I can start cutting them down to the final lengths that they need to be so I can nail together the panel frames. So for these wall panels, they ended up being two feet by four feet final size. So I'm cutting two pieces at two feet and two pieces at 48 inches minus inch and a quarter to make up for the width of the two pieces of 5 8 plywood. Uh, so that makes up the wall panels and I'm doing the same thing for the acoustic clouds. Just the braces are nailed in in a different spot, which I'll show you a little bit later. And then the window panels are slightly less than two feet by four feet. I just measured those to size on site at the client's house. So now I'm going ahead and getting these frames nailed together. I'm using a 16 gauge nailer and I'm doing about three to four nails per side per corner to get these frames put together. If you wanna pause right here, you can see I put that 45 degree brace on the top and bottom of the frame. And then I ripped a smaller three inch piece of ply to act as my center brace. Now don't forget to subtract the width of two pieces of five eighths or whatever thickness of plywood that you're using whenever you're cutting those interior braces because they're going to be a little bit narrower than two feet or whatever width you build your frames to. Now these frames here are going to be the clouds. You can see I recessed those braces about an eighth of an inch shy of the front face of the frame. That is going to hold the insulation in place so that the insulation does not sag into the fabric, which you'll see later. And these frames that don't have the French cleat top and bottom on them, uh, these are gonna make up the window panels. So now I'm just going ahead and getting those frames sanded, just enough to break that edge so that it doesn't get caught on the fabric. And now we're ready to start upholstering. So I'm cutting just some regular um, poly for the rear side in black. And this client chose to use um, a nice premium wool blend for the front fabric also in black. Uh, so we're just going ahead and getting those cut to size and stapled on. So I'm using a pneumatic stapler and just regular T50 staples. The pneumatic stapler saves a ton of time. I highly recommend grabbing one. Uh, this is the insulation that we're using for this job. It is rock wool safe and sound. It is three inches thick and this is the version that comes in a two foot by four foot piece. So it fits perfectly inside of our panel frames. So now I'm going ahead and getting the front face of fabric put on and I'm just doing all four corners with tension first. Then I like to staple down one long side. Then I tension the opposite long side, staple that in. And then I can make sure that I fold over my corners very neatly, staple them in. Um, I do have some other videos on my channel focusing more on upholstery if you wanna check those out. These are making up the wall panel frames. And you can see I just simply place that insulation right inside and then it's ready for the front face of fabric. So there you can see on those wall panels, I actually put the rear fabric on the inside of the panel. That leaves the French cleat exposed so that we can easily hang this panel um, onto the wall, which you'll see later on in the video. And these are the cloud panels. You can see I had to put the piece of insulation in first because it's resting on those braces. Then I put the rear fabric on and then I can lastly put the front fabric on and the upholstery process remains the same for all of those. Now, I'm just cutting down these 45 degree pieces uh, just to one foot wide. These are gonna make all of my wall mounts. So these small pieces will drill into the wall and that is what the wall panels will hang off of. So here you can see the client's studio and they began to move in some gear, getting it all ready for us to do our thing as well and for him to have a nice complete studio. So here's all the hardware we're gonna use to install these wall panels. You see I have a small drill bit, the drywall anchors, some construction screws, 
um, using a laser level, measuring tape, all that good stuff. So once I have my height set, we did these two that are underneath the windows because they're gonna be at a lower height compared to the rest of the panels in the room. And here's the step-by-step. -step. So I start off with the cleat on the wall. I drill two small holes to give me pilot holes in the drywall and on the cleat. I drill out the hole in the drywall. I screw in my drywall anchor. Then I can use those construction screws to screw the cleat into the wall, into those anchors. And then the panel just simply hangs right onto that cleat. Now, the good thing about using this style of cleat is that once you mount them, you still have a good six inches or so, depending on how wide you make your panels and cleat of left to right adjustability. So you can slide that panel left to right along that cleat if you need to micro and fine tune your acoustic panel placement. It's a great way to have that left to right adjustability. There you can see both left and right walls all installed. Now we're gonna get started on doing the prep for the cloud panels. You can see that I had Christian install some, this is just Gorilla Tape, just to hide the seams of the staples in the fabric. So that way when they're suspended, you don't really kind of see that from um, each side of the mixed position cloud. So Christian is screwing in the hardware. We're using those eyelet screw hooks and we're just measuring two inches in from the outsides of the panel frames, which will give us 20 inches of width for hardware. Um, and once we have those all prepped, now I can begin my measurement onto the ceiling of the mixed position. So we already figured out the width of the client's desk, his kind of preferred seating position where he's gonna put his speakers, which gave us the starting position for our clouds. Uh, which in this case ended up being about three to four feet from that front wall right there. Um, this may vary depending on your setup, um, but we've kind of followed the similar process to the wall panels, except we're just going in with that anchor and with that eye hook. So I'm using my laser level, make sure everything is marked out exactly where it needs to be, uh, especially on the ceiling. It's a lot harder to fix mistakes and it's way more noticeable. So we always wanna make sure that we use lots of reference points and find our center of the room and make sure that everything is exactly where it needs to be before we start drilling holes. But once we do drill holes, we just drill them out. And here's a little close-up shot. You can see we drill them out, put in that drywall anchor, screw in our eye hook. Then we use a locking quick link to attach some chain and then another locking quick link that will lock on to the eye hook that's on the panel. Um, so it's quite tedious, but once you get it all put together, it's quite easy. You can see I can just suspend these clouds right onto those chains and just swing them up, put them onto the other pieces of hardware, and it's that easy. I like to use some zip ties to zip together um, the left and right cloud to the middle cloud. That just helps keep everything nice and cohesive and so that there's no air gaps between the cloud panels. Everything looks like it's all one big six by four foot cloud, even though it is in fact three two by four foot clouds. Now the last kind of stage we're gonna do here, the client wanted some LED lights on top of the clouds to kind of give some ambient lighting and to match his desk. So I just picked up this piece of one by eight wood from Home Depot and I'm just sticking that light and that is just a 16 foot, just a standard uh, LED from Govee uh, off Amazon. And I'm sticking that light around that piece of wood and on top of it as well. And then I can just simply rest that right on top of these mixed position clouds. And then I can wire uh, the power source uh, to the outlet that's right behind the TV there. And then to manage and hide all of these cables, I am just using a stick-on conduit. Uh, this just hides that power cable just to give us a nice seamless look, especially with that um, kind of TV mount and center kind of fireplace mantle that this client has. I followed the grout line right in the center and followed the center line on the ceiling as well and stuck that conduit on just to make sure we have nice, very, very easy and professional kind of look uh, once it's all done there. And you can see I also placed all of those window panels into the windowsill. Here's a few beauty shots of the studio. Once again, thank you so much for watching. This has been Daniel from Sound Headquarters. We have lots of really cool projects coming real, real soon on the channel. Please stay tuned for lots more full length content. Check out all of our previous videos, shorts, all that good stuff. I really, really appreciate it. It helps me a lot. So thank you, thanks for watching. This has been Daniel from soundheadquarters.com, peace out.